Welcome to my channel. To create my Ahsoka, I am going to use this beautiful Claudine as a base. I think the skin tone is correct and the shape of her face is very sweet but at the same time shows strength and fierceness, ideal for my Ahsoka. I will start by cutting her hair as short as possible and then I will submerge her head for a few minutes in very very hot water, almost boiling. This way, decapitating the doll is easy. There is less risk of breaking the neck and the glue on the inside of the head softens and I can get rid of it and the remains of hair more easily. The next step is to remove the remains of hair and glue. For this, I usually use a flat head screwdriver to scrape from the inside and then with tweezers or thin pliers remove the remains through the neck hole. This time the hair was not held with glue so it was simpler and certainly much less disgusting and sticky than other times. I use pure acetone to remove the factory paint and I cut off clothing's wool ears because Ahsoka won't need them. After a couple coats of Mr. Super Clear, I can start on one of my favorite parts, drawing Ahsoka's face. But I have to admit that this time I am very nervous. In the animated series, she's a very interesting character. I like her. She's fun and grows through the chapters and situations she experiences. But the Ahsoka that I want to create is not that one. It is the one played by the actress Rosario Dawson and that's what makes me nervous. I know that my skills are not close to creating a realistic character, but I would like my doll to have that presence, that personality and that strength that only an actress of Rosario's quality and professionalism can bring to the character. When Rosario lends her body, her movements, her voice and her intonation to Ahsoka, she becomes very real. Rosario feels screen, but that's not overshadow the character. Rosario is simply perfect, in that role and in any other. Needless to say, I admire her greatly as an actress and even more so as a person and as a woman. I love her. Drawing the white lines on Ahsoka's face has been fun. That is, along with the Leku, the most characteristic part of her. You have to do it looking for symmetry and I have used my two favorite white pencils. One from the Stabilo brand and a Faber Castell white charcoal. With that, working in layers, I have achieved greater color saturation and good definition of the marks.
And here's my least favorite part, growing eyelashes. I can't make decent eyelashes. I draw, I erase, I draw, I erase and I start again. There is a moment when I stop erasing, I don't really know why, maybe it's boredom or maybe I'm happy with the, what I've achieved, but it's hard to say, sometimes I don't understand myself. After the highlights on the eyes, it's time to put on the leku. For them, I use a flexible air drying clay. I use this and not a poxy sculpt because Asoka's leg will leave less freedom of movement than Eras in Dula's when dressing her at the end, so I decided to try this flexible material. The result has not been as good as I expected, but if in the future I decide to remake Asoka, I will take it into account. I used the epoxy sculpt to create the headband she wears. By the way, I have used my utensils to work with pastries. And in light of the results, I think they will be better used if I use them when working with my dolls. I am not a best maker. The blue lines on the leg were not the final ones. What you see are guides that I painted to have an idea of where they will go and make the headband centered and symmetrical. They are marked with acrylics and are easily erased with water because they are not sealed. Now it's time to finally paint the Lego, but this time I will seal them at the end with Mr. Superclear to prevent them from erasing. But you have to be careful because the MSC can crack in this flexible material. Mental note, I have a love-hate feeling for this flexible clay.
For the details of the headband, I used a silver leaf. They are small details and they have a metallic shine with this technique. For the top, I used a pattern from Requiem Art Design. I love all Requiem Art Design's patterns, and the ones I've tried have been easy to follow. I have modified this to adapt it, and I made the pants following a pattern that I made to make Eras pants. I reuse a pair of black boots for hair, although these have heels and a saga doesn't. It's a license I've allowed myself. I sewed a cape for her and used the cape hood from the Delightfuls pattern. I also modified this pattern.
and with all this, my girl is ready for the final photo session. you like it the result? If so, subscribe to my channel and give it a like. Leave your comments and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye bye!